What is going on everybody? It is Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 20th of June in 2019 in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I personally see potential in and that I am looking to trade as the month of June here is winding down. But before we do get into these different topics of today's video. For everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content that I'm putting out here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to be further connected with our community, there are two links down below in the description box. One of them being the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group. Make sure to get in there again. That is the best place that you can get in contact with me and a bunch of other members in our community. I believe the Discord chat has about 800 people in there, a bunch of helpful people and uh, that that trade stocks, invest in the stock market, all of that different stuff that deals with this channel. So make sure you guys get into there. You will not be disappointed. And without further ado, let's just talk about what ended up happening today on the 20th of June in the stock market, starting off here with the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing up 27 points today and 72 cents, up 0.95%. And we actually ended up hitting an all-time high today at about $29.58, $2,958.06 today, putting us uh, a bit higher from that all-time high that we hit back in towards the end of uh, what month was this April in 2019 the Dow Jones industrial average went up 250 points today up around the same percentage value as the S&P 500 up about 0.94 percent the Dow did not hit an all-time high today the all-time high on the Dow Jones is at is $26,951 and you guys can see we are about 200 points away from hitting that all-time high here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The NASDAQ here tech heavy index. You guys can see now it's down about $8.50, down about 0.11%, but that is the future. If we go to the one day, one minute, we can see it peaked at about 78.21 today. That was before the market opened actually at about 8.50 or was that during the market open. I, I'm confused, guys, because I am in Mexico right now and the time difference is a bit uh, different from what I'm used to. So this could be at the uh, open of the market. It hit 78 and then it ended up selling off to about 77.10. And then we ended up closing on a nice little upswing here up to about 77.77. And then we ended up selling off. So again, guys, it, it, it did pretty well today, but with the markets in general, SPX, NASDAQ, the Dow, they opened up very high today and then they ended up selling off a bit um, in the morning and then they saw a bit of a rally um, towards the middle of the day. So going back here to the S&P, let's break down some technicals very quickly. We'll look at a couple of different time frames. So let's start off here with the 180 day four hour chart. We've been talking about these levels on the S&P 500 between 29.15 and about 29.50, roughly a 45 or is that a 35 point um, gap here that we've been trading in over the past couple of trading days? And you guys can see, like I said, you know, we gapped up this morning pretty heavily, right? We closed yesterday at about 29.27. We gapped up at about 29.53. Saw a pretty strong resistance here from the previous all time high that we saw towards the end of April. And that is where we started to sell off, right? But when we look at the 20 day, one hour, this was simply just just a little dip for the S&P to cool off before you guys can see here, you know, before it started to, you know, continue the uptrend. If we talk, uh, you know, if we do a little um, trend line here, what do you guys see, right? You guys see we bottomed out at 27.28. We popped up. We consolidated a bit as the market was awaiting the Fed's decision. We we realized the Fed was not going to cut the rates. Market popped up anyway, and we popped up again today, right? And now we saw the little dip. We maintained a higher low from the previous, and 
we popped up again towards the close of the market, really solidifying and confirming that higher low on the trend line, popping up here, looking to honestly make another all-time high tomorrow, you know, if we continue this little upswing. And we will know that by looking at the pre-market futures. This is what I do all the time, right? You need to understand, you know, what the pre-market futures are looking like. If they're gapping up heavily, let's say the s and is up 10, 15 points tomorrow morning, that could signify a green day. That could be another gap up before before we potentially run up uh, even more throughout the day tomorrow. And that's what I'm personally looking for. But as of now, you know, the uptrend is still intact. We got the pullback. We got the nice bounce on that trend line. Everything is looking pretty nice right now for the uptrend on the S&P 500. So if we go back to that 180 day four hour chart and oh my goodness, guys, the internet is again playing with me right now. And if you guys don't know, I am in Mexico. I've mentioned that in the past couple of days. And my Wi-Fi here has been very, very spotty, but it does say real-time data here. It does. I am still hooked on the internet right now, so I don't know why it's not popping up. But nonetheless here, guys, you know, there we go. The NQ, we can see here. Actually, let's go back to the SPX very quickly so we can see some other time frames. So tomorrow, you know, what I'm waiting for, guys, are we going to break above 2960? Are we going to make an all-time high again? Are we going to continue to make these all-time highs? One thing that is worrying me, to be honest, guys, is we did not get that Fed cut, but the market continues to push up because it's still pricing in the possibility of a Fed cut in the month of July. And to be honest, guys, I mentioned this in yesterday's video as well. I wasn't really expecting a Fed cut this month. And I and I did a bunch of research. I looked at a bunch of different sources, analysts, and they weren't expecting it either. They were all, most of them were expecting the Fed cut in July and the market in general is expecting that now. And, and the market honestly is pricing it in. As you guys can see, the market continues to push up. So I'd wait and see, you know, are we going to break this resistance? If we do, we might continue to run. But mind you, the RSI is extremely overbought. So if we were to pull back, honestly, guys, I wouldn't be too surprised because this market is in need of a cool off because from this 27, 28 level that we bottomed out at, we've been able to run almost 8% here, which is crazy in literally the matter of 17 days. So that's pretty good. You know, 8% is a return for one year. An 8% return for one year is amazing. And the market has done that. Well, it's not amazing. It's good, right? It's pretty average. And the market has done that in 17 days. So you got to understand, you know, the market is a bit hot right now. It could cool off. You know, if it does cool off, we break this trend line. Let's say we break that 50 SMA. This can be a confirming factor that we might be pulling back um, for some days to come here. Going over to the Dow Jones now, industrial average, just like the S&P, um, we've been riding an uptrend very, very nicely. We've been riding the moving averages, the EMA, the 50 SMA, this trend line here that I drew out in yesterday's video is still intact. You know, we pulled back a bit. We cooled off a bit after that gap up hit a higher low here, and then we popped up again to 26,798, almost 26,800 here on the Dow. If we're going out to the 184-hour chart here, guys, we broke out of the resistance at about $26,500. We talked about that. We held it as a new support, which was very, very nice, right? And then we gapped up today, which really solidified it as a support again. And now we're struggling a bit, it seems like, to get out of this 26,730 to 750 level of resistance. That's currently where we're trading right now. And if we go to the 30 day, let's see if we can see it there. Maybe the 90 day, we can see it a bit better. Actually, it does seem like we did break out of it this morning as we gapped up. And this is a level that we need to see are we going to maintain this level as a new support? And guys, if we do maintain it as a new support tomorrow, and let's say we see the futures are up, we're seeing we're gapping up tomorrow morning, we could very well hit all-time highs tomorrow on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That wouldn't surprise me, to be quite honest with you guys. But just like the S&P 500, be careful. The Dow is very overbought. Take a look at this RSI indicator here. It's at 81. Anything close to 70 and and especially above 70, that is extremely, extremely overbought. And the market, again, is pricing in this rate cut for July. So the markets can continue to run at this point, guys. Although there's a bunch of negative stuff 
stuff in the economy, right? A lot of things are starting to slow down. The market doesn't seem to care. It seems like they're fixated on this rate cut. That's all they're looking at. And the market just continues to push up, push up, push up. So potentially keep an eye for that all time high tomorrow or if we cool off, you know, take a look on the 20-day, one-hour chart. If we break that trend line, if we start to get back to the 26,500 level, maybe retest that 50 SMA, you know, this could be a cool-off in the Dow Jones, a much-needed cool-off in my personal opinion. So going over here to the NASDAQ, the tech heavy index. On the 20-day, one-hour, you guys can see we popped up to 78.21 today. We hit that higher high. We pulled back, retested that 50 simple moving average here at about, what was that, like 77.20. Bounced on top of that, confirming a higher low from the previous, looking very, very juicy right now for the continuation of this uptrend. So going a bit closer here on the five-day, five-minute, let's see what it's looking like. You guys can see on an even closer basis, you know, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and now it seems like we're getting rejected by that 180 SMA. Tomorrow, tomorrow, if we break that, you know, that can be the confirming factor that we need to see for us to continue to push up here on NASDAQ and get to that to, to get to that next higher high uh, to complete the uptrend. And the all-time high here on the NASDAQ, guys, is at 78.79, and we aren't too far off from that. Honestly, guys, if we saw a ridiculously green day, you know, if we saw maybe two, three small smaller green days, that can get us to that all-time high in no time. And if we're just taking a look on a percentage basis right now, you know, we're about 1.5 to 2% away from that all-time high. And again, that is a ridiculously close spot. You know, if we can hit a really ridiculous green day, that can get us to the all-time highs, um, you know, very quickly there. So that is the market update, guys. Pretty much all you need to know right now is the Fed rate cut is being priced in heavily into the market in July. And let's say we don't even get a rate cut in July, which I don't think is going to happen. I honestly think we're going to get a rate cut. You know, the market might tank at that point, right? Because it's part, it's pricing it in very heavily at this point. And we gapped up this morning. Again, like I showed you guys on the intraday charts on all of these indexes, we gapped up, we sold off. And then, you know, midday, we started to pop back up at a higher low pretty much on all of the major markets, which is a good sign that we might be swinging to the upside even more tomorrow in tomorrow's trading session, right? You guys see it on all of these intraday charts, right? Higher low from the previous low from yesterday's session. So, you know, the uptrend is still intact. So let me know down below in the comment section, what do you guys think about the current state of the market? Do you guys think the Fed is going to cut the rates? Do you guys think the markets are going to continue to hit all-time highs? Do you think the NASDAQ, do you think the Dow, are, are they going to hit all-time highs? I would love to know what you guys have to think about about that, let me know down below in the comment section. So today's trading session for me, guys, like I mentioned in the previous couple of videos, you know, I'm in Mexico and it's kind of hard for me to trade like I do when I'm back home, but I'm doing the best that I can right now to get about an hour in the morning, two hours tops to try and do some trading, look at some charts and break down technicals and, you know, converse in the group chats with our community and all of that good stuff. So today, one thing that I did notice in the morning and I talked about this in the group chat with a couple of people is the S&P 500 take a look at what it was doing this morning again we talked about the big gap up here it gapped up let's see I think it was like 1% or something like that we gapped up it seems like we hit a uh, resistance here at about 29.55 which was that level again from back in April uh, April 30th when we hit that previous all-time high we pulled back a bit right, to about 29.50. We popped back up to the same level at about 29.55. We saw the rejection at that same level. So I was like, okay, this could be a double top. And then when we pulled back down, popped back up again to 29.55, and we started to get rejected heavily. And when we started to break into the 29.49 level, the 29.40s level, I was like, okay, this is a triple top. And we started to sell off aggressively, which was a pretty bearish sign in my personal opinion, right? We saw the triple top, 
It was a double top at first, then the other rejection was the triple top, and then we started to sell off aggressively, and then we broke the 29.50 level, right? And this is when I started to see potential in SPXS, right? SPXS is an ETF that trades based on the S&P 500. It's a 3x leveraged ETF that goes up whenever the S&P 500 is selling off, right? And you guys saw the big sell-off that we saw in the morning after that gap up, and this pretty much opened up a nice margin of profit on um, SPXS. You guys can see from 1820 right here, 1815 up to the peak at about 1862, that was about a 2.58% uh, profit that was open from the low to the high, right? If you were to trade, um, you know, if you were to time it perfectly, you would have made about two, 2.6% 2 on your money. But me, I didn't time it perfectly. Again, I'm in Mexico. I can't, uh, you know, I don't have access to the Wi-Fi. I was busy. I was doing beach stuff, you know, trip stuff. You guys know how it goes on vacation. So I was able to catch a quick little move here on SPX, uh, SPXS when we did dump again, like I showed you guys, you know, into that 2950 level here, right? We started to dump down. You know, this was at about what time was this? Like 1020 right? And then if we go to the SPXS, you know, at that point in time, this is when we started to pop up aggressively, right? So I took a little position here, nothing too crazy. It was at about 1820 and I ended up getting out at about 1832. So it wasn't a really crazy trade whatsoever, about a 0.7% profit. But like I always say, profit is profit. Staying consistent is what keeps you in the game of trading. And it's very, very important to do the, you know, be consistent and don't blow your account on trades, right? Because let's say, you know, I hopped in and I went out to the beach or whatever, you know, I wasn't paying attention to my trades. You know, this can very well blow up my account. I can lose 5, 10%. And that will take you out of the game of trading very, very quickly, right? Because capital is what keeps you in this. And if you lose capital, guys, it's going to discourage you, right? You're not going to want to trade. You're going to lose confidence. And it just kills your vibe, kills your motivation, and just kills everything. So it's very important to lock in those small profits when you get them and always keep you know you know your losses very very tight in my opinion you know losses of about one two percent that is where I cap it off right two percent at most is where I cut my losses I don't like losing more than two percent on a trade I rarely ever lose more um, than two percent on my trade because again I'm very strict I cut losses very quickly and that is what has really just helped me do well right over the past couple of um, you know over the past couple of months and years that I've been doing this, right? So SPXS, that is, you know, that, that's pretty much what I did today, guys. So let me know down below in the comment section what you ended up trading today. I would love to know. Were you able to catch the market um, dumping here early on in the day? Were you able to catch, you know, maybe SPXS like I did, SQQQ, maybe even TVIX, which did decent, I think, this morning. Let me take a look on the one day, one minute. Yeah, it actually spiked up very aggressively oh my goodness, this probably would have been an even better play for me. Holy crap, I didn't really notice that. It went from $18 to $20. That's a 10% move. That would have been an even better one to get in. But it doesn't matter, guys. You know, profit's profit. I was green today. That is what matters in my personal opinion. So that is the trading update for today's video. Let's quickly break down some other ETFs and stocks that I'm personally keeping an eye on. And honestly, guys, it's a bunch of the same, a bunch of the same ETFs that I talk about all the time on this channel, right? We saw gold today, JNUG. Oh my goodness, guys. Gold is continuing this rally, which is another, you know, alarming sign to me because we know that gold is considered a safe haven when the market is crashing or getting ready to crash and gold has been doing ridiculous right it's spent it's been it's gone from 1280 literally a month ago less than a month ago about three weeks ago towards the end of may it was at 1280 and now it hit highs of almost fourteen hundred dollars i think that's like an eight percent move yep eight nine percent move there and that's ridiculous for a one month move and again gold is considered a safe haven when the market's crashing people tend to flood their money into gold because gold during recessions typically 
it holds its value, right? It may lose a little bit. It may gain a little bit. But, it, uh, you know, compared to stocks, you know, gold does very well during a recession. So people might think, you know, a recession is around the corner. This could be why the price of gold is flying off, uh, you know, off the charts here. It's crazy. So, you know, gold, you guys can see today the move was about a 2 3% move. And that moved JNUG. If we look over here at JNUG, where are you, JNUG? Um, where are you, JNUG? Let me just type it in here, guys. JNUG, J-N-U-G. This is one of those gold ETFs that we trade and I talk about all the time on the channel. It goes up whenever gold is going up at a 3x rate. And take a look at the move here. 17%, 1-7. Yeah, you, heard, you guys heard me right. 17%. In one day, up a dollar and sixty-four cents here. But the thing is, here, guys, you know, gold at fourteen hundred, JNUG at about eleven thirty. That is putting both of these at a quite an overbought uh, point right here. So before even getting into JNUG at this point, I would want to see a pullback and maybe a retest at like ten fifty. You guys can see. This is a, uh, a support level right now. It was an old resistance. We broke out of it, obviously. Now it's a new support at about 1050 from back in towards the beginning of April in 2019. So if we pulled back and retested this level, that would be about a 7-8% retracement. That would bring the RSI down to a healthy spot. You know, that would bring gold down to a healthier spot. And that could be a good entry point on JNUG. So I'm watching this one. You know, I know yesterday I said um, JDST might be a good play because JNUG was also overbought yesterday, and that obviously didn't pan out here. So t tomorrow, JDST, um, I'm watching it as well for a potential pullback in gold. I don't know if we'll get it, but it's always worth watching, in my opinion. And for those of you guys that don't know, JDST goes up whenever gold is selling off. And you guys can see huge drop today, 17% to the red. So if gold sees a bit of a cool off, you know, JDST could be a nice little bounce back play here tomorrow maybe back up to that 50 SMA and you guys can see the RSI is super oversold so gold JDST JNUG those are looking very very good and I know a lot of you guys have been trading JNUG I personally didn't but if you did congrats to you because you probably probably made a killing today so JNUG JDST gold Crude oil has actually been on a ridiculous run over these past couple of days. You guys can see the triple bottom here at 51.50. We broke out of that 50 SMA. I was talking about in yesterday's video how the 180 SMA here excuse me, could be a potential um, rejection point. You guys can see now we're clearly starting to break out of that level, but we're still very, very overbought. So at this point, you know, I'm kind of being a bit cautious with crude oil. You know, are we going to maybe cool off a bit, maybe break below that 180 SMA again, maybe pull down and test that 50 SMA, maybe at like $55, $56 or something like that. That would bring the RSI down a bit. You know, if we pull back on crude oil, you know, DWT can be a good bounce back play because you guys can see, you know, it's down 15% today. RSI is super oversold. You know, this could be a bounce back play tomorrow if crude oil does end up pulling back. But who knows? Markets are hot. Crude oil is hot, right? You know, if, if it continues to run, which very well could happen, you know, UWT tomorrow could be a continuation play. But again, I'd be mindful about it. It's very overbought now. Approaching that RSI, not the RSI, the 180 SMA resistance. So I'd be careful at that level but nonetheless I'm still watching it I still see some potential you know in UWT crude oil DWT there's going to be some big swings you know in these uh, you know in the crude oil future in the UWT DWT ETF combo. So drip and gush, guys. Gush did very well today as well. It was up 10%, up 63 cents. And XOP is what drip and gush trade on. And XOP is an oil and gas um, ETF. Whenever it's going up in price, that is when gush is going up in price at a 3x rate. So if we see gush here, you guys, again, we saw it went up 10%. That is because XOP went up about 3%. And if you guys do the math there, 3% times 3, it's about 10%, 
which is what Gush ended up going up. And again, it's not exactly 3x, it's not exactly 3x, but it's pretty close, right? It's pretty, pretty close. And if you guys have experience with these ETFs, if you guys have been tracking them for a while, you know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. So tomorrow, XOP now, you know, just like crude oil in a sense, it's approaching that resistance, right? It's approaching that level where we're under the 180 SMA. We could be getting rejected here. So I am seeing quite a bit of potential in drip at this point. Drip, which goes up whenever XOP is um, selling off. And we can see drip right now. It's on a support on the 180 SMA. It's very oversold. This can be a nice bounce back play um, in terms of ETFs. And honestly, guys, it has a 25% margin of profit. And this is probably my favorite one, you know, at this point out of these ETFs, if crude or not crude, uh, if XOP ends up selling off, you know, this could be a very, very big gainer um, over these next couple of days. So keep an eye on those. I sure am over these next couple of days. Natural gas today. Let's take a look at what this one did. It ended up dumping more today all the way down to 215 from what I'm seeing here. Big dump, 230 all the way down to 215. Today is Thursday, so I'm assuming the uh, natural gas report, I didn't look too deep into it, but I'm assuming it was in favor of um, degas, and we can see degas here, guys. It's continuing its tear at $192 per share right now. It was up $18 today. It went all the way up to 205 up 10% here. I'm assuming it was up like 20, 15, 20%, maybe not 20%, probably more like 15% at $205. If we go to the 184-hour chart here, it's extremely overbought, but this pullback that we saw kind of brought the RSI down a bit today, but still it's overbought, guys, um, you know, from what I am seeing here. But nonetheless, you know, natural gas has been very, very bearish. You know, degas could continue to push up as long as natural gas, um, you know, continues to sell off, obviously, because that is how they trade, right? Natural gas dumps, degas is going up. And I've been saying this, you know, once natural gas gets into the season where it goes up, and that's typically, you know, in the fall, winter months, you gas is going to be a very good bounce back play because you gas, as most of you guys know at this point, has been getting slaughtered, right? Down 11% today, it hit lows of about 1297 as you guys can see here so if we get that pop in natural gas in these next couple weeks, next couple of months, as we are getting closer to the fall month, maybe like closer to the winter, this is going to be about three, four months away from now. You know, you gas is going to be one that could very well double your money, maybe triple your money. But just a warning, guys, these inverse ETFs, they are not meant for long term investing because they decay over time. The, the whole objective of these assets here is to day trade them, to day trade them due to their volatility, right? It's very clear these have an insane amount of volatility. This is down 11% in a day, right? You don't see stocks. I mean, you do see stocks sometimes down 11% in a day, but it doesn't happen all the time, right? And with these inverse ETFs, these swings, you know, 11% down, 11% up, they happen a lot, right? They, they, they happen pretty much you know, every week, maybe not every week, but they happen a couple of times a month for sure. So you guys, I'm watching it, but be careful. Don't swing. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do, guys, because again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not here to tell you exactly what to do. You have to do your own research, but I'd be careful of um, holding this long term due to the decay of it. But all I'm saying is when the month, uh, you know, the coal month starts to come around, when natural gas starts to pop up, you know, you guys is going to be an insane bounce back play. So inverse ETFs, guys, that's what I'm focusing on over these next couple of um, days, weeks, to be honest, because of the stock market right now. And when we're talking about um, stocks, individual stocks, not these ETFs, you know, they're very, very um, pricey, in my opinion, you know, the markets are at all time highs right now. I'm honestly not looking to swing trade um, too many uh, long large cap stocks at this point in time because again markets are hot they're at all time highs a pullback in my opinion it would open up some nice opportunities and let's say you know Apple Facebook you know, Google, some of these stocks that have been doing um, quite well in terms of their recovery. So talking about Apple very quickly, Apple right now is at a point where we're at a resistance at about $200. If we were to break here, you know, maybe break into the 201, 202 level, this can be a nice play back up to 210, which is the next resistance. But again, if the markets cool off, let's say the NASDAQ cools off, that might bring down Apple here. But we're in a nifty spot right now, guys, because honestly, this rate cut, 
I don't know. You know, if we get the rate cut in the next month, this could end up pushing the markets even higher, right? Even though they're pricing it in right now, you know, this could push the markets to a 3000 SPX, maybe a 3100. I'm not going to call that in particular, but I'm just saying it's a possibility that, you know, if the rates get cut, you know, these stocks can go flying at this point. So I'm kind of just waiting to see over this next month what is going to happen with the next Fed meeting, which is why I'm I'm kind of staying away from individual stocks right now. Obviously, I'm holding my long-term portfolio. Nothing has really changed there. I haven't really been adding stocks to my long-term portfolio. I've just been reinvesting some dividends here and there and just holding at this point. But inverse ETFs, these are ones that I'm going to be focusing on mostly and the market ETFs over this next um, month. So until we get that next um, Fed meeting. So I'm going to wrap up the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. And again, it really supports me and supports the channel in general. And I do appreciate every single one of you guys out there supporting. It really means the world to me. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. What are your thoughts? What did you trade? What are your thoughts on the stock market? Are we going to hit all-time highs? Are the markets going to crash? I would love to know what you guys think. And if you guys want to see further content from me, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out. I'll catch you all tomorrow.